So the question that was posed has to do with uh, syllable scooping, uh, okay. which is a strategy that we teach in pinwheels and in foundations. And we teach on our syllable, our scooping syllables cheat sheet to scoop from consonant to vowel. And if there's more than one consonant before the next vowel, then we catch one in the scoop. But if not, we just scoop consonant to vowel. The question came up that this person is seeing in like the dictionary or other resources um, scooping that would include a single consonant that's in between the two vowels. So for example, a word like visit, she's seeing resources that would say that you would divide it in syllables, the V-I-S, and then the second syllable would be I-T, or the word limit, uh, she's seeing resources that say divide it L-I-M and then separately syllable I-T. And that is not how we're presenting it. We're presenting it as visit. We would scoop V-I and then S-I-T, or we would scoop limit L-I and then M-I-T. Um, and then when we have a short vowel signal, our scooping syllables cheat sheet does say we catch the whole short vowel signal in a scoop. So she's just questioning like, am I, should I be teaching it the way that we show on our scooping syllables cheat sheet? Because that doesn't what she's seeing in other resources. So it's interesting because what a dictionary tent, it, it, what we have to talk about is what is the motive of each method? So what a dictionary shows you is where you would separate syllables. I believe this is correct. I'm not a lexicographer, but where you would separate syllables if you were breaking a word in half to go from one line to another, right? So a word like visit, you would break it. First of all, I would go to the next line because such short word, but you might break it V-I-S dash I-T. And then they have other information in a dictionary about how words are pronounced. And even that is tricky because how we pronounce a word varies based on our regional dialects. So we, our goal is for kids to learn how to read and synthesize information for word recognition. And so we are having kids break syllables into how a word is pronounced, okay? Because we, when we speak in English, we tend to speak from consonant to vowel and consonant to vowel and consonant to vowel. And the way we, so the way we teach scooping syllables is very similar to how we say a word. So we don't say viz it, we say visit. Now, because some sounds can prolong, we will hear them a bit on each side of a syllable. Viz. I actually kind of started that S a little bit. Visit. Because we do something called co-articulation. Our articulators are always getting ready for the next sound that's coming. Always, always, always. So if I say vest, my V pronunciation, I already have my mouth in the position for E, vest. But if I say voom, my mouth, when I make my V, is already in the position for the U, vu. Um, And that's because my brain, which is an amazing thing, not mine in, 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 <laughs> in you know, in entirety, but, you know, people, our brains are amazingly able to be ready to know what sounds are coming and be ready for that and be very efficient in our production. So 
if I say something then, for example, like limit, I'm getting ready for the M, but I really don't, I really don't release that M till the second syllable. Li, I, but I don't do nothing. I don't say limit. That's not really the way we say it. We say limit, but the the heart of that M production, that consonant likes to come before the vowel. So the reason people started working on segmenting syllables this way is because we were coming up with all these syllable rules, which the dictionary may or may not follow. And they were all based on trying to um, be consistent in how we separate how we separate syllables, but it didn't match the way we talk. And so when we teach kids with these arbitrary rules, when they try to sound out words, they're not recognizing the word. If I say, I've had kids who, who literally would go, um, they would say um, something like, uh, viz it, viz it, viz it. I don't know what that word is. But if you had them say visit, visit, they, they would say, oh, visit. It's, it was too much of a disconnect from the way we talk. So kids are trying to read. They're reading multi-syllable words. They may be reading chrysanthemum, right? Um, they're trying to read these big, long words and figure out what they're reading. And we're not having them segment as they read. And it's confusing to them. They're not recognizing the word. When we're reading, we have to be able to shift our sound production and shift our stress in order to recognize words. And that's why we teach it that way. I don't think it's actually a problem for kids to learn it this way and then have to learn, say, for example, that a dictionary would say, if you write the word visit and you split it, you would split after. And by the time they get to the, where do you split words when you're writing that would follow what a dictionary would do, they're at way high level, level skills in terms of their, their reading and writing skills, their literacy skills, and they can add on that information. I think sometimes we worry that if we're not super consistent, kids can't add on information. And in truth, that's not true. I mean, we've all learned science concepts that were at these kind of low level. And then you got a little, you know, you learned some basic anatomy stuff or something when you were in grade school. And then you went to high school and you had your biology class and it, you layer in even more information and you find out that this whole thing you learned about cells was kind of simplistic. And really cells work this way. Then you take a college biology class and you learn, well, actually what you learned in high school about the way cells work, it's way more complicated than that. And they really, you need to apply these whole other methodologies to it. And I mean, that's just how learning works. It's okay to layer in information. So I hope I've addressed why we do what we do. Um, and, and I, I think I wouldn't be afraid of it. I, I think it's easier than saying sometimes in visit, you split after the S, but in local, you split before the C. That is actually, that's a bunch of arbitrary rules that can be confusing. So we're going for functionality for reading. That's our goal. Just to add to that, of course, we were doing word study then, and we're doing word sums, now we're splitting based on where our prefix is, where our base words, where our suffix is. So a word like local versus locate, now that L-O-C stays together because it's a base word, plus an A-L, plus an A-T-E. So that's a different situation. And we teach kids that too. Right. But, and that is the difference. We, we're teaching um, both methods of, of dividing words by syllables and by morphemes um, because right. kids need to be flexible thinkers and thinking in all of those different terms and ways. Right. They need to have all that information that they're applying. And the research is just mounting, mounting of 
how much we need to be applying that morphological plus uh, uh, syllabication information. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Appreciate you answering that question.